The history of Poland and the United States is a long, close, and overall friendly relationship. Many Americans don't know that a Pole even played a crucial role in the founding of the USA's independence through Polish nobleman Kazimierz Pulaski. Dubbed the father of the American cavalry as he was sent over to the States at the recommendation of Benjamin Franklin himself, Pulaski literally saved George Washington's life and he is one of eight people to ever be awarded honorary United States citizenship. With that said, the relationship of the USA and Poland often gives Gives us many pleasant surprises, and as an American living in Poland, I'd like to give you perhaps an even bigger surprise by telling you many Polish cities can actually remind Americans of areas in our country back home. So, if you're a native of the amazing country of Poland, or if you're a Yank like myself who is fascinated by this lovely culture, sit back, relax, and enjoy a list of the similarities between these Polish cities and their American counterparts. Number five, Warsaw is New York and Chicago. Now, forgive us for starting with the most obvious comparison. However, I believe that by adding Chicago into the mix, we can add some unexpected insights here. Additionally, Chicago, as every Pole knows, not only has a large Polish community, but the city itself often calls Chicago the largest Polish city outside of Poland, with an estimated 1.9 million people of Polish ethnicity in the area. With that said, the comparisons between Warsaw and Chicago don't simply stop there. Warsaw is a very flat, walkable, grid-like city with few hills and an extensive transportation network that can get you almost anywhere in the area. Chicago is a very flat, walkable, grid-like city with few hills and an extensive transportation network that can get you almost anywhere. This shared flatness leads to both cities having a main downtown area with skyscrapers that push out into the sky. And again, due to both regions flat terrain, these skyscrapers can be seen from many parts of the city. Compare that to other Polish cities, such as Kraków or Poznan, where depending on where you are standing or what neighborhood you're in, you will not be able to see the major landmarks in the city, such as Wawel Castle in Kraków. Additionally, that grid-like system in Warsaw on a flat surface allows for blocks and blocks of large apartment buildings nestled in with smaller homes and commercial buildings, which is very similar to many Chicago neighborhoods in the region. Lastly, although Chicago is built right next to a massive lake that is so big you cannot see the other side of it with the naked eye, both cities have a fun and thriving waterfront scene still close to their respective city centers with lovely parks and bikeable areas. Now this other comparison is rather obvious and one of the most common comparisons you will hear both in Poland and the United States when people compare the countries. Of course, the fact that Warsaw is the financial capital of the country and one of the most diverse helps draw the comparison to New York City. However, again, much like the Chicago skyscrapers, indications of American industry and culture, such as Warsaw's well-known Coca-Cola sign and overall faster pace of life compared to anywhere else in the country, also helps draw similarities. Warsaw is additionally the fashion and modeling capital of Poland, and although Poland is not one of the countries that is often considered a home of fashion in Europe by any stretch, the minute you step off the train or plane in Warsaw, you can quickly tell that people think about their appearance a lot more than smaller cities. Lastly, the we don't like New Yorkers attitude that many Americans have against New York City, particularly close cities such as Boston and Philadelphia, is similar to how many Poles from other regions will talk about Warsaw. I hate to admit it, but I think anyone from a city like Krakow or Katowice will admit that as a general point, people from other cities in Poland are not the biggest fans of Warsaw, or at least Warsaw people. Now, I personally love Warsaw and many Americans will, but not to worry though, as this common dislike for people from the big city again happens very often, not only in the United States, but all around the world. Feel free to ask somebody from Manchester or Liverpool in the UK how they feel about people from London. Number four, Krakow is like Austin, Texas. It took me a minute to think of what I would best compare Krakow to. Although being both the second and largest city in Poland and one of the main historical capitals of Poland, 
and even often being called the cultural capital of Poland. To compare Krakow to an American cultural capital, such as Los Angeles or Miami, would just not fit. Los Angeles, of course, is much larger, and I would also say architecturally and even the way people behave in Los Angeles is very different. Krakow is what we call in the U.S. a college town, wherein a major university or universities are one of the defining characteristics of the city's culture. And you can't think of a college town without thinking about how the student life and youth culture affects it. With this in mind, I would compare Krakow to Austin, Texas in many ways. First, the geography of the two cities is a much closer comparison than Krakow to an LA or a Miami. Austin, Texas is nestled on a river that cuts through the city center right near the main downtown area and has two separate developed areas on each side. This relationship with the river helps define the areas and ask anyone from the northern more populated part of Austin about South Congress and they'll have a lot of opinions. Similarly, ask people from the northern, more populated part of Krakow about Podgorzha, and they'll have a lot to say. Additionally, as mentioned, the University of Texas is one of the better state schools in America and is a defining cultural characteristic of Austin, Texas, much like Universitet Jagiellonski is for Krakow. Lastly, due to both its well-known student-based nightlife and educational center of power, Austin, Texas is a well-known mixture of party people and more middle-class smooth living, again, much like Krakow. Number three, Wrocław is Boston and Pittsburgh. Now it's time to talk about one of the other major college towns in Poland, Wrocław. Boston is probably the city most known for being full of smart students due to Harvard University, Tufts University, Berkeley School of Music, and many other colleges being located in the area. And yet Boston also has a working class history and a rougher edge associated with it due to its class divisions and immigration history. Pittsburgh has one of the most well-known universities in the United States, Carnegie Mellon, and yet it has a rougher edge due to its working class divisions and immigration history. Wrocław is a city full of some of the best universities in the country, including Universitet Wrocławski, Politechnika Wrocławska, Universitet Ekonomiczna w Wrocławiu, and many others, in addition to its well-known industrial past and history of being a battleground for major wars. You can't learn about Wrocław without learning about the history of countries fighting over it, and Boston in the American mind is well known for its revolutionary war history and riots, most notably the Boston Tea Party, where a bunch of Americans dumped King George III's tea into the harbor. I could imagine the brave poles of Dona Shlonsk doing something similar if someone tries to mess with them in the wrong way. Number two, Katowice is Atlanta and Silesia is the South. Now I will admit that I am currently in a relationship with a Silesian girl, which I have learned has a very specific set of assumptions in Poland that she is strong, independent, and knows how to handle herself, which in my experience is very true. And thus I have spent a lot of time in Shlonsk. As I was walking around Silesia, particularly Karowice, I noticed how many signs were related to the fact that we were in Silesia, with many banks, buildings, and schools being simply named something like School of Silesia or Slonski Bank or the well-known park Slonski. In the United States, if you go to a region that's well-known for its people's behavior, how different it is than the rest of America, how those people often proudly represent their region and city, how there are many signs about the fact that you're in, let's say, Texas, something like that. I can't think of a better example than of the American South. Therefore, I would first compare the entire Silesian region as the South in America. Additionally, my girlfriend says that in Silesia, they are raised to be very respectful, say thank you, please, and so on, which is exactly what the people in the South say. They are well known for having manners. Have you, the viewer, ever been to any southern cities or any other cities in America? If you're Polish or if you're American, have you been to Silesia? What do you think of these comparisons and others? Let us know in the comments. In any case, the minute I began to compare Silesians to Southerners, it all started to make sense and made me understand the overlap between sections of the country. Respectful, hardworking, but not to be messed around with, 
I would say Southerners and Silesians have this in common. And additionally, of course, Silesia is in Southern Poland. Lastly, I compared Atlanta to Katowice since Atlanta is generally considered the capital of the South in the sense that it is the largest metropolitan city in the South. And when people in the South make a bunch of money, they often move to Atlanta. Lastly, I think that the actual architecture of Atlanta and Katowice are similar since they are a mixture of modern 20th and 21st century buildings right next to historic industrial buildings, brick, etc. from the past. And last, Zakopane is Aspen, Colorado. Although there are many cities in the United States that are well known for skiing, wood cabins, and so on, I think the easiest comparison for many Americans will simply be Aspen, Colorado. This is because when you think of skiing in the United states you're always going to first mention the state of colorado but more specifically if you ask most americans to think of the first word that comes to mind when you say aspen you'll think skiing cabins mountains or winter now of course zakopane which is one of my favorite places in poland by the way is known for much more than simply skiing including gorolski food and culture i love osypki and if you ask polish people many of them will complain that it's overpriced or too packed with people and i similarly believe that many americans avoid aspen colorado because it's so well known expensive and there are other options for a winter getaway. But if I was to speak to an American and describe what Zakopane is, I would first say, think Aspen, and the American would immediately think of an expensive resort town for skiing, log cabins, cold, etc. So those are the comparisons, and I'd like to see you in the comments. If you're Polish, uh, tell us if you've visited any of these parts of America. If you're American, tell us if you've been to any of these cities in Poland. How do you like the comparisons? Are they accurate? Do you agree or disagree? Can't wait to see you in the comments. This is Amerykonski signing off. Thanks for watching.